Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to continue our discussion of the endocrine system. Now, the endocrine system seems really complicated. There's a lot of different hormones. We've got a lot of them written right here. Um, these hormones might act on other structures to produce other hormones, and it seems really convoluted. But really, there's a logic to it, which is what we're going to talk about here. And really, we'll see that this slide is pretty much going to summarize about 40 to 50 percent, probably closer to 50 percent, of everything that you need to know for the endocrine system. So make sure to watch this till the end and we'll answer a lot of questions. All right, so first let's talk about the structures here that are important. Up here at top in this blue area, this is all about the hypothalamus, okay? So actually, this is the structure of the hypothalamus up here, okay? The hypothalamus is a lot of neural tissue. We know from a and 1 that it's going to be involved in a lot of things that are autonomic regulation, like regulating hunger, thirst, sex drive, things like that. But the hypothalamus also is going to make hormones, okay? It's going to make a lot of different hormones. There's actually seven here that it's going to make, okay? Now, directly beneath the hypothalamus, so this is this area in green right here, that's what that represents, this is the pituitary. Now, the pituitary is divided into two parts, and they differ structurally, okay? This part over here in the back, so this is the posterior over here, this is the posterior pituitary, also called the neurohypothesis. It's called the neurohypothesis because it's neural tissue. In fact, what's important to know about the posterior pituitary is it's literally a downgrowth of the hypothalamus. It's actually sort of part of the hypothalamus. It's composed of the same types of tissues, okay, and it's literally a downgrowth of it, okay? So the posterior pituitary is neural tissue, thus the name neurohypothesis. Now in front here, this is the anterior pituitary. The anterior pituitary is not a downgrowth of the hypothalamus, okay? Whereas the hypothalamus is made of neural tissue, the anterior pituitary is made of hormonal tissue or endocrine tissue, okay? So it's made of something completely different, and it's also referred to as the adenohypothesis, okay? And the way that the anterior pituitary and the posterior pituitary are going to release their hormones and how they function are very, very different. In the first part of this video, we're going to exclusively talk about the anterior pituitary, and this is going to be the most complicated part, but hopefully we'll break it down into bite-sized chunks. All right, so when you're talking about the anterior pituitary, we first have to look at the hypothalamus. There's five major hormones right here called releasing hormones that are made in the hypothalamus, okay? These are growth hormone releasing hormone, gonadotropin releasing hormone, prolactin-releasing hormone, corticotropin-releasing hormone, and thyrotropin-releasing hormone. In fact, if you see anything that ends in an RH, is an acronym, or if it ends in releasing hormone, it's made in the hypothalamus, okay? So these five hormones are made in the hypothalamus, okay? Now, connecting the hypothalamus in the anterior pituitary, there's a network of blood vessels in this region. Okay, this network of blood vessels is called the hypothalamic hypophyseal portal system. Okay? This basically means that it's a network of blood vessels that transports these hormones, okay, transports them through the blood vessels and down into the anterior pituitary. Okay? So a portal system basically refers to a blood vessel system. Hypothalamic refers to the hypothalamus, and hypophyseal refers to the pituitary because hypothesis is actually the other term for the pituitary. So this blood vessel system is able to transport these hormones made in the hypothalamus down to the anterior pituitary. Once these hormones are at the anterior pituitary, after they've moved through this portal system of blood vessels, they then trigger the anterior pituitary to release other hormones. Okay, so let's get that straight. These five hormones, these are releasing hormones, they're made in the hypothalamus, they then move through the portal system down this stalk, and then once they're in the anterior pituitary, they trigger the anterior pituitary to make other hormones, okay? So let's talk about a specific example, right? Growth hormone releasing hormone, made in the hypothalamus. When growth hormone releasing hormone is sent down the portal system, it goes to the anterior pituitary and then triggers the anterior pituitary to make growth hormone, or in the case of humans, human growth hormone, HGH, okay? 
Another example we could use CRH, corticotropin releasing hormone. Corticotropin releasing hormone is made in the hypothalamus. Once it's made, it moves down the portal system and then moves into the anterior pituitary where it triggers the anterior pituitary to make a hormone called ACTH, also called corticotropin. Okay, so when you're talking about the anterior pituitary, this is an example of hormone-induced hormone release. The hypothalamus is making these hormones, sending them through the portal system to the anterior pituitary, and once these five hormones are in the anterior pituitary, they trigger the release of another hormone from the anterior pituitary. Okay? And that hormone, once it's released from the anterior pituitary, then goes into the general circulation where it goes to a variety of different tissues and exerts effects. Okay? So now let's talk briefly about each individual one of these. Okay? So growth hormone releasing hormone made in the hypothalamus, it's going to move down this portal system to the anterior pituitary and trigger it to release growth hormone. Then growth hormone, once it's released from the anterior pituitary, travels in the general circulation, that is the blood, to the liver, where it triggers the liver then to release IGFs, which are hormones called insulin-like growth factors. Of course, growth hormone is going to have a lot of other effects, but this is just one of its effects. All right. If we're talking about gonadotropin-releasing hormone, that's made in the hypothalamus, it then moves down this portal system to the anterior pituitary, where it triggers the anterior pituitary to release two hormones, actually, follicle-stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. So when these two hormones, FSH and LH, are released by the anterior pituitary, they then travel into the general circulation, that is the bloodstream, and they go to the testes or ovaries, depending on the sex, and trigger them to release hormones like testosterone in males and estradiol and progesterone in females. Okay? If we look at CRH, corticotropin-releasing hormone, it's made in the hypothalamus, travels down the portal system to the anterior pituitary, where it triggers the anterior pituitary to release ACTH, also called corticotropin, into the blood, the general circulation, where it then goes to the adrenal glands, which sit atop each of the kidneys, and trigger those to release cortisol. Another example, TRH, thyrotropin-releasing hormone, made in the hypothalamus, travels down the portal system where it triggers the anterior pituitary to release TSH, also called thyrotropin, into the general circulation, where it then goes through that blood into the thyroid and triggers the thyroid to make thyroid hormones such as T3 and T4. So these four that I just discussed with you, so GHRH, GNRH, CRH, and TRH, these are examples of hormone-induced hormone release, which is then followed up by another hormone-induced hormone release. So for example, TRH, which is thyrotropin-releasing hormone, from the hypothalamus triggers the anterior pituitary to release TSH, which is also called thyroid-stimulating hormone, or thyrotropin, which then triggers the thyroid to release other hormones. Okay? So those four are ultimately going to trigger other glands to release other hormones. The one exception is going to be prolactin-releasing hormone, PRH. It's made in the hypothalamus. It then travels down the portal system to the anterior pituitary, where it triggers the anterior pituitary to release prolactin. Okay? Prolactin is a hormone. It then travels into the general circulation, where it then goes to the mammary glands in females and causes the production of milk. Okay? So milk is obviously not a hormone, uh, but the first example here of PRH and prolactin, that is another example of hormone-induced hormone release. Okay? Now, the trick with all of this is really just uh, memorizing which one goes with which. But, okay, growth hormone releasing hormone, that means it's going to cause the pituitary to release growth hormone. Corticotropin releasing hormone is going to trigger the anterior pituitary to release corticotropin also called ACTH or adrenocorticotropic hormone. If you can learn kind of these paths right here, it makes it a lot easier. So know which releasing hormone goes with which anterior pituitary hormone, and then know the general hormones that these cause the release of in their respective tissues. So that's the anterior pituitary. So when the hypothalamus makes these hormones, they then travel through this portal system of blood vessels to the anterior pituitary, and then because the anterior pituitary is glandular tissue or it's endocrine tissue, it will then be triggered to release another set of hormones. 
And then those can go into the blood, the general circulation, and exert various biological effects, such as production of milk or the production of other hormones. What's also important to understand is that this portal system, which its full name is the hypothalamic hypophyseal portal system, this portal system of blood vessels only connects the hypothalamus to the anterior pituitary. This portal system has no effect on the function of the posterior pituitary. The posterior pituitary does not rely on blood, this portal system, it does not rely on that to move hormones into it from the hypothalamus. Instead, it's going to rely on neurons, and that's what we're going to talk about right now.